The RTX 4070 Ti is a 1440p GPU. When testing that GPU in my last video, I noticed that it was GPU bound at its target resolution of 1440p. And that was using a Ryzen 9 5950X 16 core CPU. How much of a CPU bottleneck exists? And what CPUs will not be a bottleneck? Let's get into it. The Ryzen 9 5950X was the top gaming CPU when it launched back in November of 2020. That 5950X was showing that it was CPU bottlenecking the 4070 Ti in Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p. Running at 4K and it was completely GPU bound, but at 1440p, which is the target resolution for the 4070 Ti, and it was only 58% GPU bound. And when I dropped the resolution down to 1080p, it was now only 32% GPU bound, indicating a strong CPU bottleneck. For those who have watched the channel know that I have an i9-9900K system and I was wondering how that flagship gaming CPU that was launched in October of 2018, almost five years ago, how much would that CPU bottleneck the 4070 Ti? The i9-9900K at 1440p gets 182 FPS and is 36% GPU bound. And at 1080p, that CPU is able to achieve 207 FPS just like the 5950X even though it is showing 0% GPU bound versus the 5950X being 27% GPU bound. But what does that really mean? How strong of a CPU bottleneck is there? And what I really want to know is, how many frames am I losing? Staying with the AM4 platform, I was able to pick up a used 5800X 3D. That CPU took the gaming crown when it came out in April of 2022, 18 months after the launch of the 5950X. The 3D vCache technology transformed the regular 5800X into a gaming beast, and it is the fastest gaming CPU you can get for the AM4 platform. Running the benchmark at 1440p, it was able to achieve 177 FPS, or 3 frames slower than the 5950X. But it was showing that it was GPU bound 99% of the time. So while it was not any faster, it was completely GPU bound, indicating that this could be the highest frame rate you can get from a 4070 Ti at these settings. Lowering the resolution and running the benchmark at 1080p, you can see the benefit of the 3D vCache as it was able to achieve 229 FPS, which is 10% faster than the 5950X. Next, I wanted to run a current gen CPU, so I put the 4070 Ti into my AM5 system with a 16 core 7950X. This CPU briefly held the gaming crown before being usurped by the 13900K. I purchased the CPU, RAM, and X670E motherboard as a combo deal during the holidays as a sort of mini Threadripper like system to replace my aging X399 platform that I built on a budget back in 2020. That Threadripper system just freed me from the confines of the i9-9900K and for productivity work, I can't imagine ever going back to 8 cores. For my work, 12 is now the minimum and 16 is a luxury that I really enjoy. And it could also gain much better than my aging Threadripper. I didn't expect much of a difference between this and the 5800X 3D based on my assessment of AMD's August announcement. I ran the benchmark with the 7950X, and at 1440p, it achieved 181 FPS, which is right in line with all the others. It was also showing it was GPU bound at 98%. Then running at 1080p, it achieved 241 FPS, which is 5% faster than the 5800X 3D, and 16% faster than the 5950X. Lastly, I was able to pick up the fastest gaming CPU in the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D. And that's when I fell into the rabbit hole and the reason why this video was delayed. I ran the benchmark at 1440p and I got the same result. It was not any faster. Still at a 180 FPS. What was different was the 5800X 3D was 99% GPU bound, while the 7950X 3D was 77% GPU bound. What? That doesn't make any sense. I then decided to run it at 1080p and it came out to 218 FPS. This was even more confounding. That was lower than both the 7950X and the 5800X 3D. The 7950X 3D is the world's fastest gaming CPU. Really, AMD said so, and so did many of the reviewers. 
The 7950X3D is the CPU that provides the best for both gaming and almost the best for productivity. It's supposed to be the best of both worlds. It has one Zen 4 die with 3D vCache for games that benefit from extra cache, and it has one Zen 4 die that runs up to 5.7 GHz for the fastest performance for games that benefit from higher clock speeds. This result is confounding because the 7950X3D was slower than the 7950X and it was slower than the 5800X3D. And this was repeatable, run after run after run. I couldn't believe the results, it made no sense, but it was repeatable. If the game was running on the 3D vCache die, it should be faster than the 5800X3D. And if the game was running on the other die, it should be the same or at least close to the 7950X result. What the hell? AMD said, You can install your new Ryzen 7000 series processor, update your chipset driver and BIOS, and you're good to go. I did those things. The results did not look good to go. The 7950X3D sent me down a rabbit hole. I'm going to discuss the 7950X3D in another video. There is way too much to say here. For now, let's just say that for a premium product, a $700 top-of-the-line CPU, it did not deliver a premium experience. Let's get back to the CPU bottlenecking. So far for the 4070Ti, we saw the 5950X is not causing a reduction in average frame rates of the 4070Ti at its target resolution of 1440p in shadow of the benchmarks. And we saw the same thing with the i9-9900K. And testing with the current gen faster CPUs verified this. The CPU bottleneck is seen when switching to 1080p, where we saw the 7950X is 16% faster than a 5950X. What about the 3090? I put that GPU head to head with the 4070Ti in my last video. Many people purchased the 3090 during the crypto mining boom, and that GPU was said to have been CPU bottlenecked at resolutions below 4K. And when I ran the benchmark at 1440p, it was also GPU bound at 58% with the 5950X, exactly like with the 4070Ti. Testing first with the 5800X3D, running the benchmark at 1440p resulted in an average of 162 FPS, with it being GPU bound at 99%. Compared to the 5950X, that is the same average frame rate. Lowering the resolution down to 1080p and running the benchmark, the average frame rate is now 209 FPS and 52% GPU bound. That is a 9.4% increase in frame rate versus the 5950X, so very similar to the 10% we saw with the 4070Ti. Next is the 7950X. Running the benchmark at 1440p, you see the average frame rate of 162 FPS and 99% GPU bound. This is the same frame rate as the 5950X and 5800X3D. Moving down to 1080p, and the 7950X results in an average of 213 FPS, just 2% higher than the 5800X3D, and 11.5% above the 5950X. I did run the 7950X3D with only the 3D vCache die enabled, and at 1440p it achieved 162 FPS, which is the same as all the others, indicating no CPU bottleneck at this resolution. Lowering the resolution down to 1080p, and the average is 221 FPS and 98% GPU bound. The result is 3.8% faster than the 7950X, 5.7% faster than the 5800X3D, and 15.7% faster than a 5950X. So with both the 4070Ti and 3090, in this testing, we are not seeing any improved frame rates at 1440p with the current generation and fastest CPUs. At 1080p, we see it as high as 16% faster on both the 4070Ti and the 3090. Of course, no one should be buying these two GPUs for 1080p gaming. I do wonder how low in CPU can you go at 1440p. From the testing, the Intel 9th Gen i9 is sufficient. But how much lower can you go below a 9900K before you start to see significant bottlenecks? Is the 9900K the minimum CPU you should have for 1440p? By the way, if you like videos like this, hit that like button, share this video, and consider subscribing. And let me know in the comments below, how low of a CPU do you think you could go without bottlenecking a 4070Ti at 1440p?
I'll explore that in a future video. And again, I'll have more to say about the 7950X3D in an upcoming video. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.